No leaders wanted. Recently at the salon, I overheard one of the stylists say, Nigeria has everything except for leaders. He said so passionately. That God has blessed this nation with everything. For example, in the north, you can even plant yam on a rock and it will grow. Just small sand and that yam will grow. That's how God bless us past. But these are leaders are from hell. Thank God for this COVID-19 that, that they can travel and have to deal with the nonsense the way that they do. <laughs> with headlines of the EFCC chairman being arrested by the DSS, the embarrassing infighting of the ruling APC party between its chairman and many factions. With this, the Festus Kiamo outburst at the National Assembly, it seems Nigeria advertised a poster somewhere that shows no leaders wanted. And so there we have it, everything but leaders. In this crisis, with the exception of a few bright spots, the opportunity for leaders to rise to the child might have been lost on us. If bureaucracy was really one of the problems with government delivering results, then you would think that this emergency will be used to push difficult policy reforms through. But our acting leaders seem to not have thought much about reforms or actually improving the system. I guess it's really hard to envision a better Nigeria. It's just much easier to jostle for the next election and maintain a toxic political system that keeps new entrants out. So the talent pipeline in politics remains stale and uninspiring. The, one jostling, the ones jostling for 2023 literally need, would need to buy votes, unleash mayhem, and rig like it was going out of style, simply because bad products just don't sell. But what if we put out a different ad? What if we admit that though it may seem like we have everything in Nigeria, but everything becomes nothing if there's no leadership? What if we edit our original ad to say, leaders wanted urgently? Maybe we could get visionaries to see past the broken education system and build a public education system that actually equips Nigeria's future workforce. Maybe we could have a healthcare system that saves lives and also healthcare policy that covers Nigerians so every trip to the hospital is not a life sentence to poverty. Maybe we could retain our sports mavericks and not be an outsourcing ground for athletic talent because of the facilities and the deliberate attempts to train and pay our stars well. Maybe we could have a transport system that is fit for purpose. Maybe our natural resources, oil, gas, gold, and more, could actually create wealth for the communities they are sourced from while creating jobs and a multiplier effect on our social economy. Maybe Nigerian leaders could make black people all over the world proud. What if? What if? The end. <laughs> I don't know if the issue is the adverts. I'm sure, I, I'm sure that's not where you're landing it in a sense, but you're, you're basically saying we should be looking out for the right kind of leadership as the way to get it right, if, if I get you right. Um, and I think we all appreciate that because I, I've been, that's where my focus has been in more recent times is how can we make it possible to have conversations with people who are more interested in serving and doing the right thing. I've even started to appeal to people that I know, you know, and maybe I'll be appealing to you as well, to say, you know, there are all these webinars people are attending now. Why don't we have a webinar around ideologies and ideas about pushing Nigeria forward? I'm even appealing to the women now because I think, well, we've tried the men. <laughs> like Sadie says, we've tried this, we've tried that. Let's now try a new perspective. You know, because I just really think that we need to roll up our sleeves and get involved. And then for me, the real freshness about it will be to now start engaging the grassroots you know, because a lot of times people are focused on the, the middle class and the upper class. And those people, to my mind, seem apathetic when it comes to pushing for what they want because they say to themselves, whether you have Buhario or you have Atiku, I'll turn on my gen, I'll ride my Jeep, I'll still be okay. So, but the grassroots are where the, the, the shoe pinches. So we need to now start having that kind of dialogue where in, in foreign climes, they go door to door and engage the grassroots and say, this is what we're going to do for you. This is what we're going to do for you. Come, let's talk about you know, a new a, a handover. Let's talk about power changing hands. I think we really need to be serious. It's 2020 and 2023 is around the corner. So those of us who are thinking these thoughts should go beyond thinking the thoughts. We should now start coming together under a platform where we can start exchanging ideas and then get behind the right people. It can be from amongst us. We don't need to wait for the known faces.
I, I hope uh, I'm, uh, saying, I, I'm saying something. Yes. Uh, can I, yeah, mm -hmm. you are saying something, but mm -hmm. um, um, just that you don't understand the complexity That's of the problem. That's what they always say. That's why you're seeing it from mm -hmm. that point of view. <laughs> you just talked about mentorship. Mm -hmm. People don't just wake up mm -hmm. and say, we want to. People, go check other nations. Political leaders are mentored. You want to be a lawyer, you go to school. You are taught, but, but you the, are mentored. Our predecessors Let, have me, nothing to that's, teach us that's where I'm coming from. They're recycling to. corruption. That's where I'm coming to. So you are taught medicine, you are taught law. It's only here. You want to be a leader, you are not taught anything. Mm -hmm. Somebody just wakes up one day and says, <laughs> ah, Professor Skiamu has been talking on TV. It can I be better. He let him be come join us. The <laughs> yeah. is say, uh, oh, let him come. You know, and that's how they are picked. And then when you are picked, their conditions, terms and conditions apply. And so, look, when you get here... So how do you break the mind? mind? So, it's a long-term thing. That's where we have been missing it. The point we miss it is we think we can just do this webinar uh, three years and start. then... You have to start And somewhere. then uh, three years after, you go run for election. You, I remember telling people like Fela, Fela Druto here that you are, a, you are a joker. You don't just wake up because you have been delivering seminars everywhere. Exactly. You, you just it. wake up three months <laughs> to At election. At stuck his neck out. Wait, now. Mm. Look, it is better not to stick your neck out than stick your neck out without planning. Mm -hmm. And so... You don't, don't also be selfish. Build a platform that 10 years, 15 years from now would be able to at least, you know, do something. The president of Pakistan started like 18 years before now. He, was, he retired from playing um, baseball, cricket. Cricket. cricket, and then he started building. Mm -hmm. Do you know how long it took by Buhari? Mm -hmm. You know, so, but the problem we, the rest of us have is that we just think that Three years is enough, and then we just move start. into the election. What I'm saying is, let's at least start. I, that's why I said, yes, mm. you, are, you are speaking. Mm. But what we need, so that we have it at the back of our mind, we are starting night. It's not for us to benefit. Mm. Absolutely. If it is for us to benefit, Fair. we can as well just leave it. Exactly. It is for the benefit of maybe generations to come. Years. So by that time, we would have established a system that... You know, we we'll mentor them mm. that will be transparent, that would outlive us. Yeah. But if we are thinking that, oh, yes, because I want to be governor, let me begin to build a movement. And then three years from now, I'll be very popular. It will be only me. Mm. And then when I leave the stage, or I will just join them. And so I agree with you, but that agreement is conditional that we will not be the beneficiaries mm. of that. Um, mm. I haven't even gone in. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah, I mean, to me, it's a long-term thing, so I agree with Liberos um, that that's where our problem lies, that we have something that's going to take us like 30 years to develop, and so we have to start the system now. And that system depends on education, yeah. everything that comes before you grow Help. up, Help. before you yeah. grow up. Uh -huh. So we need to grow up Nigerians, that's basically what it is. Mm -hmm. And if nobody wants to do that, if no government is interested in it, then we, are, we haven't started yet. Mm -hmm. um, Seydu, so do, do you have... Um, we have a generic problem where, where we need to re-examine the system we're running as a people. Yes. We're running a system that is not working for us. We need to do away with the federal character and all of those nonsense that we've been implementing. That is not working for us. Let the best people rule us. It doesn't matter where you come from. You know, let's let's do away and, and do away with this huge government. You know, the huge the, the government is too expensive. We can't afford it. Maybe pick something that works for us. A smaller government, maybe parliamentary system, go back to regional system. But all of this is wishful thinking because the people that are there now will never leave the stage. Mm -hmm. So how do we how do we how do we enforce change? We we'll probably need to do a referendum or something. But the way it is right now, even if you have a saint leading us. It will be very difficult, yeah. difficult because he's guided by certain rules. You have to have people from certain areas. You have to have this number of people that you don't need, you know. So the, the system we're running is going to make it difficult for us to produce good leaders, to even, you know, move forward. We need to do away with the system. That is my own contribution. We're all saying the same thing, basically, yes. but uh, it is um, the modality yeah. for achieving that same thing that um, differs. So, Simi is saying right leadership makes everything all right. After the break, I'll be revisiting the Magus saga since the original get part two, and even maybe part three. Keep it locked. Five panelists.
five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.